is there anybody here who has any objection to these people getting married? Speak now or forever hold your peace. Anybody? Okay, how about you, sir? I think it's safe to say that you're feeling pretty darn right now. As a matter of fact, let me be the first to raise an objection. Since this painting was an act of revenge, and you are about to find out why. Known as the Unequal Marriage, this artwork is by Vasily Pukarev. This artwork was the artist's means of exposing the painful facts that lie underneath the veneer of wealth and power. The question is why he had to go and make the most frustrating artwork ever. Basically, it was on a more intimate level this time around. This artwork is set up at the front of a church where a wedding was about to take place, along with many people. A bride walks out of her dorm room. A heavenly radiance bathes her, highlighting her freshness as flowers crown her head. Her hair is falling in ringlets just underneath her collarbone, and the shimmering light from her jewelry and the window reveals her delicately pale complexion. Everything that is, except the bride, looks to be ready and waiting. Once we empathize with her serious face, we see the girl's body droop down. She holds a candle in her clenched hand, but it seems to be slipping out of her fingers. Will she carelessly let it go and light the room up in flames? Her face is so drenched in dread and misery that you would think she was holding back tears as you stared into her droopy eyes. This is not a smiling bride, but rather a mourner. She extends out her hand reluctantly as the priest, stooping down, tries to fit a ring onto her little finger. Although she maintains a cold demeanor, it's evident that she has accepted the inevitable despite knowing it wasn't her choice. The lovely groom, on the other hand, seems to have something up his you-know-what. His muscles are so tense that he looks like a walking corpse. Just like him, the candle he's holding is perfectly straight and stiff. Both the medallion on his lapel and the cross around his neck are decorations for long-term government or military service. These facts point to the man's high social rank and most likely his great fortune. He turns his head slightly to get a glance at his new wife. His expressionless face shows no sign of affection. Her parents have probably chosen this route because they see no signs of passion from him and the callous look in his eyes is a harsh reminder of what marriage was for so many individuals throughout history and still is for others, an agreement that allows for the transference of commodities and property. This pair couldn't be more different from one another in terms of personality, social standing, and even age. What will happen to her after she leaves this church? And will she find happiness and success in life, at least in terms of money, as her parents had always hoped? Where exactly are her parents, and who are these other people? Relax, pop some corn and settle in. The weirdness is just beginning. Indeed, many of these folks do seem very peculiar. Nevertheless, who can really blame them? But I find this quarters guy to be rather intriguing. Perhaps you've seen him around before. It's the painter Vasily. He crosses his arms around his chest and stares at the stained groom. The artist wanted to make it clear that he does not favor unequal marriages, so he painted himself into the piece. This makes sense, right? Sorry to disappoint you, but that's not quite true. This elderly guy is marrying his longtime sweetheart, which is why he is gazing like he could shoot daggers at the groom. Give me a moment while I explain. According to the legend, the artist had a thing for Varen Sofa, but lacked the financial means to win her parents' approval as an appropriate suitor. He had just finished art school despite coming from a humble peasant home. Even with his new artist pay, he still couldn't afford to impress the girl's family. As for the girl, she apparently ended up living in a shabby place after becoming a widow at an early age. Neither the emotional nor economic needs of her family were met by this marriage. The strangeness increases. What we see when we look over the groom's shoulder isn't that strange, since it is an older lady. The older generation of women attended weddings back then, correct? Except for the fact that she is dressed in white and has a floral crown on her head that looks identical to the young bride's. Okay, a dress, that's pushing it. Perhaps it is more accurately described as a sheet? She casts a jaded glance towards the elderly groom. To the left of the artwork, seemingly behind the priest, is another lady who looks quite like the first. 
I think it's weird that a guest will be observing the ceremony from this location. The woman's odd positioning lends credence to the theory that these ladies are ghosts. Perhaps the white fabric is meant to suggest both a bridal dress and a funeral veil. How many of the groom's wives have died already? Scrubbing their eyes as they remember a scene they've seen before, or are they sinister symbols of the young bride's inevitable demise? This complicates things considerably. This piece was a gamble for Pukarev. He made an outspoken assertion on the relationship between wealth and influence. Most of the population was eager for it. It was a popular piece of art amongst the crowd. It was so influential that it prompted imitations by other artists. As the story goes, all the senior guys called off their marriages to their young wives when the paintings were shown. Whether or not this is the case, it cannot be denied that the profound effect was not due to a rich old guy, but rather to a little girl who conveyed all that was required to be said with just a glance.